Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, June 28, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, a massive terror attack at airport check-in in Turkey. Initial reports of 28 dead and over 60 wounded. Alex Jones reports what happened and analyzes what it means. Then, we look at the final report from the Congressional Committee investigating Benghazi. And Trump declares America's economic independence as he takes on the central issue of the campaign, globalism's destruction of our economy. If we're going to deliver real change, we're going to have to reject the campaign of fear and intimidation being pursued by powerful corporations, media elites, and political dynasties. The people who rigged the system for their benefit will do anything and say anything to keep things exactly the way they are. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Well, another terror attack has taken place in Turkey, this time at the airport in Istanbul. Uh, at least 50 people have been killed, many more wounded. Two suicide bombings took place there at the airport. Now, this is one of the largest, the third busiest airports in Europe. It's a very high security location. So the fact that this could take place there is thoroughly unsettling. And with more commentary on that is Alex Jones. It happened again today. The religion of peace has struck again. More than 10 dead in a bombing and mass shooting at a major airport in Turkey. And the mainstream media is reporting on this and not even calling it Islamic terror because the president in chief, or I should say the jihadi in chief, has instructed everyone not to call it Islamic terror. There's a lot of different issues here, but first off, since when does the first lady tell school children nationwide what they'll eat at lunch or breakfast in the school lunch program? Since when does the president tell the press and the media they can't use the word radical Islam or Islamic terror? That is so authoritarian. That is so incredibly cultic. And we have record numbers of people from Islamic nations being brought into this nation unvetted. And when they attack, whether it be San Bernardino or Major Hassan at Fort Hood, Texas, or these uh, terrible event we saw out in Florida at the gay nightclub, it's then blamed on gun owners, or it's blamed in the case of Orlando on Donald Trump. We have seen gay black activists out on the street blaming Donald Trump when Donald Trump is on record never being someone who is, quote, against the gay community. It is Islam that fundamentally in 11 nations says they will execute anyone who's a homosexual. And my frustration on this front is I'm a libertarian. I have my personal views, but I don't try to make you follow my lifestyle or my worldview. I'm truly tolerant. But the left doesn't want me to just be tolerant. They want me to adopt all their weird, crazy garbage, like sexualizing children at age five, teaching them Heather has two mommies. I don't want homosexual or heterosexual or anything sexual taught to young children. And they'll tell me, oh, I'm a homophobe or a bigot because I won't let them get involved in the raising of my children. And then they go further and say I'm Islamophobic because I point out that Orthodox Islam is radical Islam and oppresses women to a level never before seen in history. And its very system, its very dogma is one of conquest and enslavement. The African slave trade was started and run by the Arabs. It's still going on in several Middle Eastern countries today, but I get to watch the black Muslims run around and tell me how great Islam is. I'm simply here saying this. The globalists have allied with Orthodox Islam. They are using it to destabilize the world. And they use that destabilization to impoverish and enslave the West, but also impoverish and enslave the Middle East and areas of Africa that are Islamic. I know good people that are Muslims. I know that most Muslims really do want peace. 
The problem is you're seen as heretics by the Saudi Arabian leadership that controls modern Sunni Islamic teaching. And that is the new dominant form of Islam. So Islam's had different periods in its history. And I do want to coexist and live in peace. But coexistence doesn't mean I give up my Christian values or my libertarian values or my free market values or my values to empower and uplift women and everybody else. I'm proud of the West empowering women. I'm proud of the West empowering literature and art and culture and creating a complex, truly independent, open, free, diverse society. And I'm not going to sit here and watch the West scapegoated and blamed for what the authoritarian left and their Islamic cohorts are now engaging in. You people are the gang members. You people are the thugs. You people are the ones trying to restrict speech and ban speech on the left and in Islam. The new mayor, the Islamic mayor of London, has said, we'll just break away. We'll just ignore the voters. We'll just bring in more people. Uh, we'll just do whatever the EU says. And by the way, we're going to ban women in bathing suits in advertising and he says it's fat shaming. No, it's Sharia law. My friends, the truth is the West has been so open, so truly liberal, that a bunch of fascists calling themselves liberals allied with Islam are coming in and dominating and taking control of our civilization and our society. True liberalism means that you can have your own individual ideas and that you're not going to attack other people for their views or their lifestyle as long as they're not physically attacking you. It's time for there to be a reformation in Islam, and there's time for a reform and reformation in the so-called liberals. God knows the conservatives need it as well, but you guys are in the catbird seat running the show, and you have let the power go to your heads, and you are wrecking thousands of years of progress. Just because you call yourselves progressive doesn't mean you're truly progressive for freedom and liberty and prosperity. You're progressive for tyranny, and that makes you, the establishment left and Islam, a cancer. I'm Alex Jones for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. Now back to our anchors and the InfoWars Nightly News. Now, considering the fact that we're seeing a ramp up of these ISIS-inspired terror attacks around the world, it's very troubling to know that the FBI hasn't alerted many Americans that they were actually on an ISIS kill list. Now, this was numerous Americans. Some 15,000 people were actually placed on secret Islamic State kill lists, but they were not notified by the FBI, nor did the FBI notify the local police about the potential dangers. So these were published on encrypted websites. There were several hit lists naming more than 15,000 people that it would like to see killed by sleeper cells or lone wolves in New York, Texas, Florida, and California. In Texas alone, uh, Circa identified 22 people in a sampling of 24 names who did not receive any notification uh, that they were on ISIS's list in ISIS's crosshairs. And it also identified two local police departments whose citizens were on this list, they also got no alert from the FBI. Now, maybe you could say, yeah, well, they didn't want to terrify these people or frighten them. No, but that is ridiculous. A lot of these people were military families. You would want to alert them so that they could take the necessary precautions, that even with arming themselves and making sure their families were well-prepared, making sure they weren't posting anything on social media or making sure that there wasn't any identifying information out there about where they live or where they're hanging out, something to prepare these people to let them know that for whatever reason, their names are appearing on these lists. But we're seeing that again and again to uh, sort of steer people away from the thought that terrorism exists, that it's out there, because they want to push this narrative that Obama has just really done a stellar job at stopping the JV team. ISIS is under control. And actually, we've seen that same narrative being pushed with the Benghazi attack, the 800-page a file has been released today on this from from the Benghazi Select Committee, and you'll see that as this attack was taking place, they were already working out how to spin the story, how the, to take it away from terrorism, and to make it save face politically for the Obama administration, while endangering Americans. And they're doing that here again. So, is this who we really want running the country at this critical juncture in our history? 
absolutely not. Not someone who would spin away terrorism in order to save face politically while endangering the lives of Americans. And that's why they just hate Donald Trump because he's coming out and saying that. And in fact, he's going on to criticize the TPP, which Hillary Clinton and Obama played a major role in. He's saying this globalization and free trade are absolutely job killers. We're going to talk about that coming up. But he points out how globalization has made the financial elite who donate to politicians very, very wealthy, but it hasn't done very much for the rest of America. Now, Obama came out very snarkily and saying, well, Trump embodies the global elites. He's hardly a spokesperson for a populist surge. And on that, you know, of course, he's correct in that Donald Trump is a billionaire. Um, but, you know, Obama, you were once being touted as the first black president, but you're hardly a legitimate spokesperson for that community. What have you done for the black community since you've been in office? Even we had Obama phone lady on to say, no, indeed, you didn't even give her the phone that you promised her. But this is why the globalists hate Trump, because he did come out and he said, yes, indeed, I became very wealthy here in America. America made me very rich. That's why he loves this country, and that's why he wants to make America great again. And they absolutely hate him. And indeed, on the economy, this, this is one of the big issues where Trump really needs to stay focused because this is where it threatens Hillary Clinton because we've just been in dire straits with these last two presidential runs with Obama and we don't need a Clinton in office. A new poll that has come out is actually saying that voters feel much more confident by five points that Trump is actually going to be the candidate that would create more jobs. And indeed, I think people are really starting to, to see that worldwide, as we see with Brexit. The people there just showed tremendous bravery in choosing the unknown rather than the known to stick with globalism. They could see what's been happening with their country, uh, how the open borders, the loss of jobs, their economy is tanking. And these people are saying enough is enough. Globalism, it's a job killer, and they wanted something different. Well, now because of that, and because of this populist surge that they're seeing with all these people supporting Donald Trump, we're really seeing the New World Order ramping up their plans to make this happen even quicker. We've got uh, the EU saying they're going to create a super state in response to all of this. And now we even have the Mexican president coming out demanding that the U.S. merge with Mexico and Canada. They want the North American Union to happen. Of course, that would kill U.S. national sovereignty. A Donald Trump presidency is not going to allow that happen, at least not if we hold him to, to what he has promised us. But I don't want that to happen. You know, I know there are a lot of people that are coming to this country to escape vile, horrific things that are happening in Mexico and Central America. But look at what's going on. I mean, they're out of the cartel chronicles with Breitbart. They have really graphic stories all the time. These people are so brave. They would be murdered if anyone found out who was actually supplying this information to Breitbart. But they're being very brave, using pseudonyms to put these articles out there, showing graphic uh, images of these executions that most journalists are afraid to report about because they don't want First of all, they don't want the cartels coming after them. But secondly, this would totally kill open immigration and kill the fact that, you know, we do need a border wall. And actually, our guys uh, were visiting the border and they just so happened to confront some illegal immigrants who were actually crossing the border right at that moment, a group of more than 20 people. And, you know, it's really bad when these border agents are willing to speak out on camera and just put it all out there so there's no confusion. Uh, Jakari Jackson spoke with the border agent Chris Cabrera. He's also the vice president of the National Border Patrol Council 3307. And he was just saying, you know, the vast majority of illegals are released into the country, disease or no disease. They, agents are still encountering tuberculosis, scabies, measles, chickenpox and many other unidentifiable infectious diseases. And they have a yellow caution tape that ropes off, oh, you're the sick one, when they do get them in these quarantine facilities. It's a, a yellow tape that is separating the sick from the not sick people. So take a listen, border agents' own voice here, trying to get this very urgent message out to America. And as far as the people coming over, are your agents encountering any type of uh, 
infectious diseases, people with illnesses as they cross the border? Oh, most definitely. We see tuberculosis pretty regularly, um, scabies. Um, more often than not, we have large amounts of uh, infectious diseases as far as scabies go. And the interesting part with that is it's, it's not actually um, seen on the body during the infectious period. And so these people clear through our system and then they go into the, the rest of the country with that disease. The most important thing is, is there needs to be a mandatory detention, mandatory remo removal. That will slow down the process of people coming through here. And the, the sad fact of it is, is so many people are coming and so many people are not making it. We're starting to see children two, three, four years old abandoned on the riverbank by themselves. <laughs> And Jakari also asked Agent Cabrera about Trump's proposed border wall, and he said it would indeed be an asset to agents. You know, it's not going to stop everyone from coming through. Indeed, that they would need um, some electronic surveillance, some other form of detection. But he said, indeed, a wall would be an asset. It would help. So go to Infowars.com, watch this video. Border Patrol agent, tuberculosis and other diseases are spreading easily. Share that video with everyone. Put it out there on Facebook. People need to see that the border agents are speaking out, that this is a real issue. And now we have the Obama administration dumping 4,000 more illegal alien kids into the U.S., and this is uh, during the month of April, so that brings the total to 29,250 kids that have just been dumped all throughout the U.S., and so we can take a look at what's going on in Europe, where uh, Muslim asylum seekers raped a woman, some 22-year-old guys, because they were having a bad day. So this is what we are importing into our country with no vetting system. On the one side, you have a presidential candidate who is putting global politics over the safety of you and your family. And on the other side, well, you got somebody that wants to make America great again. Now stick around because there's more news coming right up. And welcome back. Now today, the final majority report of the Benghazi Select Committee was released. It's about 800 pages, and does it tell us anything new? Joining me now, Margaret Howell. We're gonna break this down. Now, what we do know is that when this attack was taking place, the White House was already focusing on some spin. Spin control, Leanne, that's what I'm calling this. You know, I've been looking at this report all morning long. This is what I found. So at 7.30, the White House had a two-hour meeting. They knew that Ambassador Stevens had, had, in fact, been kidnapped at that point. Here's what they did. They came up with an action plan, a 10-item action plan. Five of those actions on this list included a YouTube video that had nothing to do with Benghazi. So the, while the kidnapping was underway, it was all about spin and damage control. There were two White House operatives, two officials. Their, name is ben, their names are Ben Rhodes and David Plouf, if I'm saying that correctly. And they were prepping Susan Rice to go on uh, national talk shows in the wake of this to do damage control instead of stepping out in front of this and doing something. Right. And of course, so this is, you know, putting it in context, this was about 50 something days out from the next election. Mm -hmm. So it was all about politics saving face for the Obama administration, not about saving these Americans that were there. Mm -hmm. But you're absolutely right. So we know that we were in we were in Libya. This this operation, it was sold as a mission for these aggrieved people. We needed to be there. Ambassador Stevens actually had a heart for the Libyan people, and he was there because he loved those people. We understand from this report that took two years in the making, 7.1 million. The number of uh, per day, I broke this down. If you want to look at it this way, 8,000 a day, this committee spent investigating, or if you wanted to do it per page, uh, roughly $9,056 per page of information. It's valuable information. It's it's worth a read. Um, Congressman Gra Gowdy, or Grouty, am I saying his name yeah. right? Um, he encouraged people to come out and read this report. 800 pages if you can stomach it. But the bottom line is that the blame falls on the administration and on Hillary Clinton. That's the bottom line. I can, right. I can give you the cliff notes. Right. Well, the, I mean, immediately before people even had a chance to digest this report, you're seeing the Clinton news networks come out and say this is security failures. It had nothing to do with Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton, just already kind of getting her off off the trouble there. But we know from leaked emails that have already come out between that she sent immediately to her daughter, Chelsea, as well as some foreign dignitaries that they were behind closed doors and immediately calling it a terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. But to the American people and to the families of those who died in there, 
they were calling it, uh, you know, a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. We're, um, we're not clear on what the circumstances. This is an intelligence failure. That's what she was she was labeling this. She was absolutely right. She was calling it terrorism behind closed doors. But the public narrative was very different than what she was actually calling it. And, you know, it's heartbreaking to know what Ambassador Stevens was going through. On June the 7th, 2012, he requested, he pleaded for security. He said, look, um, September 11th is, is coming. The anniversary of this is coming. The revolution that's underway post Gaddafi, tensions are, are heightened here. I need people guarding me. I need added boots on the ground. But Obama, he was he was going to protect that legacy no matter what. He, taking the boots off the ground, that was more important to him than these four men that died. That's very clear reading this. Right. And even now, years out, it's still very important to them to get Hillary Clinton in. Obama's going to back her, even though she has kind of snubbed him as well here. Uh, apparently, they're they're saying that government officials failed to act on Obama's orders. Mm -hmm. And so despite President Obama and Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta's clear orders to deploy military assets, nothing was sent to Benghazi. Nothing was en route to Libya at the time that the last two Americans were killed almost eight hours later. And we also know that a fleet anti-terrorism security team sat on a plane for three hours. They changed in and out of their uniforms four mm -hmm. different times. So there was plenty of opportunity for them to get in there and do something about it. Mm -hmm. But instead, the Americans had to actually be pulled out by Gaddafi supporters, not even by any of our own people. It's despicable when you think about the facts surrounding what happened to Ambassador Stevens and these three other men. It's absolutely inexcusable. And it's not only a failure to act, it's, it's an egregious, it's a, it's a dereliction of duty, if you will, because these men, um, they represent our whole country and what happened to them, it's inexcusable. Hillary Clinton is trying not to fall on her sword. That This is about saving face. You know, The Guardian did a piece 11 minutes after Trey Gowdy um, took to the airways and, and mentioned this report. Hillary Clinton's response was, it's time to get over it. Oh, really? Right. Well, I think it's time to get to the bottom of it, actually. Absolutely. And we will find out what difference it does make. Minutes before the president delivered his speech in the Rose Garden, there was an email that was sent to Ben Rhodes and others saying there wasn't really much violence in Egypt. And we're not saying that the violence in Libya erupted over inflammatory videos. But then we have Susan Rice going out and saying that. And they actually, some emails that we're seeing between um, some White House officials, they're saying, whoa, I think Rice was off the reservation on this one. And mm -hmm. she was off the reservation on five networks. Mm -hmm. So they didn't even have their whole act together. Mm -hmm. But we see officials, uh, Hillary Clinton as well, putting all of their focus on how they can spin this and turn it into attack about a video. And that is getting to the bottom of it. That is where she wants people to move on mm -hmm. because she doesn't want them to see her role that she played in it with her emails that she tried to delete mm -hmm. that showed that she was having these conversations with her daughter, mm -hmm. counter to what she'd been telling the American people. <laughs> you know, deleting emails while we're on the subject. Um, one Trump attorney, he tweeted something. It was getting major flack on every national media program this morning. This tweet about Hillary Clinton and how she sold uranium to the Russians under her fake charity. How um, he took it he took it a step further, blaming the murder of Stevens on Hillary Clinton. That's what's on the table here. I don't want people to forget that. I want them to carefully look at these facts and decide her role in this as Secretary of State. That's the most important thing that I, that I can say in this segment is that. Um, it places a lot of blame on the administration. She's trying to shift that blame now to the administration and their decision making. But keep in mind, she was head of our State Department. This was her employee. This was her ground. And, and, and to be spinning this as a YouTube video, it's just not acceptable. People are awake, Leanne. They understand what's at stake. They know what's going on. And it makes me sick to hear the spin that's coming out of this now. It's just, it's such a disrespect to these, to these men who died. Right. And we know that there was some uh, security officers there warning everyone, sending out these emails, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. that they need help, they need security. This is a suicide mission to have people stationed there. Did these emails make it to the spam folder because mm -hmm. people weren't able to send her actually any emails to mm -hmm. her private server? And that was one of the big complaints with her setting up her own homebrew server was that emails from her employees were going to the spam folder. So, you know, perhaps that's one of the reasons why she wasn't able to act in time mm -hmm. and to make sure that they had the, the backup security that they needed mm -hmm. to protect these people. I mean, total dereliction of duty. Right. And you are, I mean, the benefit of the doubt, maybe it went to her spam folder. What we do know is that that June the 7th email that Chris Stevens sent to the State Department, it was replied back to. He was requesting that step up in security. They said no. That's the bottom line. They said no more. 
And um, there, there isn't any more clear evidence than that. That happens on June the 7th. In September, of course, he's murdered, raped, brutalized, his body torched. Despicable things happen to him. You know, we would be looking at, at a, a completely different outlook, Leanne. I would be able to give her the credit that she that she's due if she had just replied with a yes, you can have the proper security. We're going to protect you. Ugh. And knowing the story of what happened to Ambassador Stevens to and to say that she really cared about him as well, it really hurt her. But then to be able to come out and try to save her own skin to famously say, you know, what difference at this point does it make? Mm -hmm. Because she really does not want any of the light to shine on her. And I agree, people really need to read that 800 pages. They need to take the time and not allow the networks out there that are fully circling the wagons around Hillary Clinton to get her elected mm -hmm. and see that once again, there is a huge issue here that the original lies mm -hmm. themselves were being perpetrated to save face for the Obama administration. And now they're trying to do it again for Hillary Clinton. Perhaps the grossest failure on record in U.S. history regarding a situation like this. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Margaret. Glad to have you thank on board. Thank you. Well, we'll stick around because Joe Biggs is going to be joining me in studio. We're going to talk about Trump's speech on the economy and what illegal immigration is going to do here in this country to make that even worse. As it was in the legend of St. George and the Dragon, the European Union is nothing less than a plague-wielding dragon, feeding on the welfare of the European people. And as it was in that very same legend, those that chose to remain under the dragon's control would vote to turn over everything to that dragon. And now, that dragon is on a short leash, meekly begging for a second chance so it can destroy everything in its path. Kurt Nimmo writes, the establishment is pushing a buyer's remorse narrative in the wake of Brexit and the globalist George Soros is leading the charge. Soros said during the annual meeting of the European Council of Foreign Relations, it was in general what you call buyer's remorse. It included everyone, the people who voted for leave, those who voted for remain, and those who didn't vote. According to Soros, the British people are not serious about leaving the EU. They simply want to express their discontent with their political situation in Europe. And now that Brexit is a reality, they are demonstrating buyers' remorse. The corporate media has adopted Soros' narrative. Is there any chance of a second referendum? Is there any going back? There's a lot of buyer's remorse and there's a lot of concern amongst the Remainers, obviously. ABC News points to a surveyation poll conducted for the Mail on Sunday after the Brexit vote. It claims of the 17.4 million who voted to leave, 1.1 million actually wished they had voted Remain. And the New York Times went one step further and offered various ways to renege on the vote. For instance, the new prime minister might refuse to invoke Article 50 of the European Union's governing treaty and instead act like the vote never happened. Because if we're going to wait for a successor to David Cameron, further thinking, and we're not going to invoke Article 50 or start the serious renegotiation of our trade relationship until later on this year, actually that is a period of indecision. Another escape hatch might be the parliaments of Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales refusing to approve Brexit. On Monday, an online petition calling for a second vote had 3.8 million signatures. Paul Manafort, Donald Trump's campaign manager, said Brexit represents a rejection of globalism and faceless bureaucrats ruling the lives of millions of people. However, globalist shill President Barack Obama would have the American people led astray yet again. I think it's important to remember that uh, Mr. Trump embodies global elites and has taken full advantage of it uh, his entire life. And uh, uh, so he's hardly a spokesperson for a legitimate spokesperson for uh, a populist surge from uh, working class people uh, on either side of the Atlantic. Meanwhile, the humiliated, arrogant swine running the EU are unveiling their blueprint for an EU super state. Nothing less than a sovereign corroding ultimatum that would propose that member EU countries would lose their right to their own army, criminal law, taxation system, immigration system, and the illusion of the control of their central bank. An all-encompassing totalitarian state that has been in the works all along. The Express UK reports, excerpts of the nine-page EU superstate report were published today as the leaders of Germany, France, and Italy 
met in Berlin for Brexit crisis talks. In the preamble to the text, the two ministers write, our countries share a common destiny and a common set of values that give rise to an even closer union between our citizens. Immediately after the Brexit, many people in England texted, what is the European Union? Well, simply put, the European Union was created in 1955 at Bilderberg by the very same globalists that have risen to their current status as the enemy of humankind fomenting quiet wars utilizing a myriad of weapons in order to establish a new world order, which those very same globalists are incredibly close to finalizing. And now the rest of Europe is following Great Britain's lead. If the British people do fold under the weight of doom and gloom shelled out by the very globalists they're trying to escape from and return like frightened children to their sociopathic mummy and daddy at the EU, the imaginary consequences the mainstream media would have the British people frightened of now would become very real in the near future, resulting in complete and total submission under a European superstate run by unelected bureaucrats in Brussels so arrogant and powerful, England would cease to exist. It is the EU that must cease to exist. John Bound for Infowars.com Do you speak Spanish? Yes. Bien. How are you? Ah, bien. Good. Dentro lo que cabe bien. As good as it can sí. be. Michael. Okay. Good. 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 Are you from Mexico? Yeah, El Salvador. El Salvador. Yeah, El Salvador. Okay. Everyone? Todos. Yes. We came together. Okay. How long was your journey to get here? It took us two months. We were working and working on the way up until we got here, where we're at. We just want to complete the journey, but we're already tired and thirsty and hungry. Eventually we'll get where we want to go, but it's getting impossible. We're tired and hungry. Trying to get to their destination, but they're, they want to take a break. You know, it's kind of hot out here. They want to drink some water. But, uh, yeah, you got any questions for them? Um, how long have they been traveling? They said it'd take two, mo two months to get here. Two months? Yeah. Jeez. They've been traveling from El Salvador. Oh, wow. Uh, what are their plans? Uh, what do you plan to, uh, to do once you're in the United States? Well, we'll see what the good Lord gives us, because only God is with us. We just want to arrive at our final destination. We'll see what the good Lord has in store for us. Is there a city you're going to? Houston? Dallas? Yes, we're going to Houston, Texas. Are we on the right track? It's about 400 miles inland. It's pretty far. Well, we'll see how we get there. Do you have water in the truck? No, unfortunately we don't have water. No, sorry. Sorry. Okay.
back here. Nothing you don't see immigration much, do you? Uh, si, por esta si. Calle. Yes. Si. Si. We just si saw de, three de, agent de, vehicles de, earlier. Si. Uh, tres trocas, uno del, uh, and a game warden, warden as well. Oh. Es un otra policía que patro, uh, y si lo and will they pick you up? Pues, si, a lo mejor si no, si estás, uh, yes, maybe not if you're si from El Salvador. De, uh, El Salvador. Si, El Salvador. A lo mejor de, uh, de Dano, uh, como agua o comida o algo así. ¿Será? Sí, van a ser como procesar. Oh. Pero si, es, si son de México, no creo que van no, a ser. No, nosotros somos puerta. todos del Salvador. Sí, sí, entonces sí. Uh, van a dar como. ¿Cómo, de... ¿Cómo me dijo que se llamaba usted? Sí. Adán, Adán oh. Salazar. José Leonel para hervirle. José. Sí. Gracias. Yo. Michael. Okay. Michael, ya yeah, José Leonel. Mucho gusto. Okay, Mr. Leonel, very good. Yeah, please. Vamos a ver si yo los ayudo. Sí, okay. Entonces. Now Donald Trump is once again taking on the globalists. In a speech today, he took aim at U.S. free trade deals. In a speech that he delivered in Western Pennsylvania, and he was targeting globalization as a jobs killer with this free trade. He said globalization has made the financial elite who donate to politicians very, very wealthy, but it's left millions of our workers with nothing but poverty and heartache. He also portrayed Clinton as an agent of the status quo that worships globalism over Americanism, and he criticized her past support for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which he described as the death blow for American manufacturing. Now, joining me, of course, is Joe Biggs. Biggs, what do you think? Is this going to resonate with the American people. It seems like if Trump really sticks with the economy and immigration, these are things where he stands apart from Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I think it's going to resonate with people uh, pretty largely across the country right now. I mean, those are two topics that Donald's really going to have to hammer on because what we've seen with Brexit, what we've seen across the country, uh, we need to hammer on those issues. Right. You know, the fact that we are sending jobs from, a, from America overseas and yet we're sending companies like Ford and these other manufacturing companies down to Mexico, but what are we getting in return? We're getting some of the worst people from Mexico. Not all of them, there's a lot of great people that come over here, but there's a lot of the criminals that are being allowed to come over here. And what's that gonna do? That's gonna help collapse our economy. Right, and they want to form, the yeah, that's the plan. They want to form everything together. They want to have this North American union mm -hmm. to merge everything together, which will go into a larger picture of this new world order, this one world government, right. where we're all under this one dictator, one police force. You know, that's what's happening. And that's right. why this is so important for Donald Trump to talk about these issues like he is right now. Right, because what we're seeing, of course, with the mainstream media worldwide is that they're really trying to paint Brexit as just this tragedies, a frightening thing. I can't believe they did it. What were they thinking? It's gonna be so terrible because they don't want people to reclaim their sovereignty and to understand that what is happening here in the United States isn't just a populist surge here. It's, it's everywhere. People are starting to see that this globalization has been terrible for their economies and people are wanting to reclaim their sovereignty. And he's absolutely right to call free trade a job killer because we've seen it. It's that giant sucking sound and a new poll. So they're always kind of talking about these polls about how, you know, Hillary Clinton, she's got a five point lead and she's leading. But when it comes to the economy and that people are asked which president is more likely to grow the U.S. economy, voters are more confident that Donald Trump is going to be the president to help grow the economy. So, I mean, he's a jobs builder. You know, he actually has created some jobs where Hillary Clinton has not. And she's more than willing to give even more jobs away. I think people are scared of Donald Trump because he's an unknown entity. But we have a proven criminal in Hillary Clinton. Her track record shows that she is a horrible person. You know, her track record at the State Department is flawed in so many ways. The fact that she's covered up for her husband who has raped women and done all this, these horrible things, Benghazi. The fact that, you know, we, we heard interviews on Alex Jones today how people feel like everything that's happened with this is being made a joke out of by the Republican Party to kind of take the focus off what's really going on. I mean, he has a proven track record of taking something and turning it into something that's really sought after, right. you know, an image branding. And that's kind of what we have to redo right now in America. We have to rebrand ourselves in a sense, because across the country, it, 
freedom is now being looked at as something that's bad. Right. You know, with what happened with Brexit, people are like, oh, you shouldn't break away. No, that's awesome. Right. We should praise that. We should encourage these other countries to do the exact same thing and follow suit. Right. Well, and also kind of trying to put that message out there that these people are crazy for wanting to build a wall around their country that is being overrun by illegal immigrants that are flooding their country. It is an invasion. It's not immigration. There's no way that you can take care of people when they come over in those amount of numbers and people are just wanting to re reclaim the ability to say no and then talk about a wall and this North American Union. So the Mexican president uh, tweeted out uh, demanding that the U.S. merge with Mexico and Canada. They want to become this North American Union super state. And this is something that obviously Alex Jones has talked about for many, many years, warned about. And it seems like with Brexit, with this rise in people, you know, supporting Trump and wanting to make America great again, they're saying, wow, we really need to ramp up our plans, our one world government plans, because if we don't, we're going to have people waking up and breaking off, breaking out of our global government, breaking out of that. Let's I mean, look at this story today. Now, this was coming out of Breitbart. Actually, this was one of their great things yesterday. Uh, they have the cartel chronicles there. It's totally graphic. I don't even know if you guys want to put the images up on the screen, but let's talk about just open borders. OK, so this is right here at the Texas Mexico border, we have even more hacked corpses where these cartels, just for the territory, they are just killing people to take their property, to, to get them off their own land. So yeah, let's just go ahead and say no borders. Let's not keep these gangs down there. We've got Mexico police and their troops routinely raping women that they arrest, beating them, torturing them, um, subjecting them to blows of the stomach, threats of rape. This is routine. They do this all the time with women that they arrest and they arrest these women because they're easy targets and they're doing this to boost figures so that they, they can show society that the government's security efforts are yielding results. They're saying, well, look at all these arrests we're making. We're helping to take down crime, but really they're just going after easy targets that they can threaten with rape or actually rape, beat. I mean, it's just disgusting. And I looked at these articles today and... The wall just got 10 feet higher. I mean, we're, we're bringing in people with a gang mentality. I mean, that's the issue. You know, there are people that come through who are good. Like I said before, I'm not trying to say immigration is not the problem. Illegal immigration is the problem. And the fact that Obama is essentially has a stand down order to all Border Patrol to let any and everybody through without any kind of checks, people coming through with diseases. We have What's gonna happen when people start getting through? sick? They're not even yeah. quarantining them. At the border, they have that yellow police tape up. You see it, a murder scene. That's not going to stop a disease from spreading. Right. And Jakari Jackson, Adon Salazar, Michael Zimmerman are down there at the border again. Two years later from when we originally broke the news, I've been down to the border numerous times catching drugs coming across the border. You know, the criminals, the gang members, you know, the fact that they're trying to use it as this beard to say, well, there's kids coming across. You know, there's the, the dreamers. Right. Yeah, there's some of those, but that's a small aspect. We're bringing in people with a gang mentality. We have a situation at Fort Bliss last week where two soldiers were caught at the Falfurus border uh, checkpoint smuggling people in. And why is that? Because we have such a lack of leadership in America that people with a gang mentality can get themselves into the military, keep their nose clean for a while, and then start smuggling people in. And why do we do that? Why is this happening? Because the only kind of people in their right mind that want this to stop or people like us who are awake, we want to put a stop to this. We want to put a border up. We don't want to stop immigration. We want to stop the bad people from coming in. There right. needs to be a checks and balances. We need to find out who it is that's coming across. We need to find out what they have. Because those people come through. They start getting sick. We have quarantine set up all over the place. Our economy is going to crash. And next thing you know, they're going to be like, well, maybe Obama should just go ahead and stay in. Or yeah. maybe, you know, we'll blame it all on Donald Trump and let him take the presidency and then we'll go, look at this. This is what happens when a Republican takes over. Let's bring in our people. And then they've already brought in all their votes because the and illegal Im immigrants are going to come over here and they're going to go, you know what? I'm going to vote for that Democrat. Well, and that's the thing is if you see all of the states where they're taking the refugees, the resettlements, they're taking them to all the red states to turn them blue. So, and you're absolutely right about that is they're wanting to create that voting block there. It's so transparent. It's absolutely frightening. And if you think about it now, they've got several cases of babies being born with Zika here in the United States. So these are things that could be stopped or at least, you know, we need to, to look at this truthfully and frankly, but they're trying to make it, oh, Trump's gonna deport everyone. He's gonna take out everyone's families. 
No, it's about responsible participation. If you're one of these young ladies that just graduated as the valedictorian of your university and your parents brought you here, you had not, I personally, I'm okay with that. I think that, you know, something does need to happen. But what we need to talk about is people that haven't been here forever, that don't agree with our Western values, that don't unite with what America stands for. That's a problem. And we can look at what's happening in Europe with uh, Muslim asylum seekers raping women because they had a bad day. Well, hold on. You're being a racist. You're being sexist. You're being Islamophobic. It's ridiculous. Tone down your rhetoric, all right? But listen to this. Donald Trump says, if we're going to deliver real change, we're going to have to reject the campaign of fear and intimidation by pushed by being pushed by powerful corporations, media elites, and political dynasties. He's the only one saying it. Clear your mind, look at the true picture, put your emotions away, and these are the facts. Thank you for watching. We'll see you here tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. Hillary from prison.